I hope after you listen to the talk, you learn about ethics, you learn about some of the stories behind the images, and hopefully you understand why I do it and the importance of considering these. Little understood, we know little about them and the importance of its conservation. Next slide. We're driving, sorry. We're driving, you're driving. <laughs> Whoops! <laughs> Alright, so you have some pictures of me when I was about, you want to left? I'm about 8 or 9 years old and I'm about to release a barn owl. I started off with raptors because of prey. I used to read about them a lot. I got involved in the falconry and rehabbing the injured ones to be used as educational ambassadors. And so on the right is me and a white as it's so small like this. And on the bottom right, you are wondering what contraption I'm working with. Well that is my old lighting fixture. I use an old piece of foil, painting tape and wire to try to get the right lighting on the snakes and amphibians. I was photographing. I was shooting with an old Nikon P600. Right now I shoot with a Canon. Uh, none against Nikon. Once they go to shoot with a potato, that's... <laughs> wow. <laughs> but the reason I shoot Canon Shots. now is because when you open the Nagio magazine, right? The first, the, the older magazines, you used to see Canon and big lenses. All of them just line up and so... I picked up Canon. Right now is the 70 Mark II on 100 mm macro. I use primarily, so you can change slightly. And so Trinidad has four venomous snakes. This is the common lancet, locally known as the Makupi Balsin. And it is the most dangerous because it's common and where it's, it finds itself where you're walking on a trail, you might not see it, you might mash it. And so with this picture, I had an off-camera flash. I had my 24105 actually on a macro extension tube. And I just waited for the tongue flip. We can switch it tight. Where was this? So this is Turei Water Steps. And if you could spot the snake on the bottom left here. Now I came up to the waterfall and I put on all my stuff. And then I was about to sit down right on the log here. <laughs> and I looked behind me and I was like, oh shit. <laughs> yeah, that one, right there. Okay. Oh, sorry. And so, he was about small like that, coil. And this is about two weeks old here. And this is where everybody sit down in front of you waterfalls to take pictures, right? And so, it really goes to show how they could camouflage. And they're not there to harm us. I moved the snake right after because had a group come in and they could have stepped on it and killed it. So, yeah. Next slide. She has seen it? Alright, so now we move into Tobago. So the outline we see here is the Tobago glass frog. You see the parent here and the master eggs here. I put the flash on the other side and I took it from underneath. And I really like how the outline came out there. When you're doing this, you really have to take in consideration the stress of the animal and to only like take two or three minutes to photograph them and you cannot touch the leaf as the parent may jump off and may not come back to the leaf and abandon all the eggs. And then wasps will come and eat the eggs. So you can change the slide there. Next time, John. you research the, obviously you know what? Yeah. Is that just part of your building your knowledge beforehand, or you kind of know they would to shoot and you can research it? Before right. You so I go to a location and I already research about the location. I know all right, this is my target species. So let's say Tobago, Tobago glass frog, Tobago falls coral, a couple of these snakes, and I know where to look, where to find them. I'll research the locations. And so here is, I think, this place, second place, uh, 2020 competition for nature and this is a male glass frog guarding its eggs. I named this image parental instinct for obvious reasons. 
and they got the most developed eggs. And back then, this behavior wasn't really documented or documented well. So this is actually featured on iNaturalist, which is a big um, network of photographers, wildlife conservationists, who all upload their images, and this was a behavior that stood out. And so that was really big, especially from Trinidad and Tobago. I could change the slide. It's actually so, a good website if you don't use it. Yeah, um, just to learn about... If you take a picture of something and you don't show what it is, you upload it with whatever information you have, and the people in the community will see that it's a good website. Exactly that. Yeah. Rangus to the Royce or something. Why can you tell us a male? Well, the males specifically are known to um, guard the eggs. So the female will lay the eggs after and plex us, and the male will stay back and guard the eggs. How big that probably is? <laughs> it, this was a, with a 1855 and a macro extension too. And what kind of, what kind of parameters do you use to shoot to get any clarity on the... I use uh, this uh, F20, mm -hmm. uh, 1 to 100 of a second, the flash, not too far, sure what the flash rate in, but I had a diffuse on it and it was on a wire, so I could have manipulated it easily. Any other program I jump on you? Or? You'll see later. I have some good so pictures. Like you and then jump on here. Yeah, yeah. For it, I think. yeah. <coughs> so this is we in Costa Rica now. This is the emerald glass rub. Um, the lighting here is a bit different. It's a bit softer. I kind of like it. Um, I was kind of rushing to get this picture because I'm in Costa Rica, it's a new place. I'm looking for the black headed bushmaster. I didn't find it, but <laughs> you can change the slide. Oh yeah, and this is my rental in Costa Rica. I was really proud of this. <laughs> Kitchen slide. And this is a wood colored salamander. It is considered uncommon. A salamander. That's Costa Rica. Yeah, Costa Rica. Color or wood, wood color? Color is like. Color or color? Spell it. Color is like C O L O R E D. Okay. Yeah, color. And they're considered uncommon. They're very rare in. Um, parts where the habitat has been disturbed. So seeing these represents a pristine ecosystem. And I was really pleased to see these. I actually love them a lot. And it can change like that. So is it that you know where to find these things? Or, or is it that we walk in the bush and we pass at them because we just don't know where to look? Yeah, you don't know where to look. So I, when you walk in the bush, you had to pay attention to everything. You had to look for yeah, Sometimes I walk past something and I hear something slither. A look is a snake. You have to tune into all the senses. Yeah, something slither. Yeah, mm -hmm. or jump, or rattle. <laughs> and so I turned the corner on the stream, right? Because we were walking along a stream. And I saw this. It was a salamander again. <laughs> <laughs> and so it was the first time in the world we documented a cat eye snake eating a salamander. And so we published this as the world's first for this creation event. Wow. So it's really special in that case. Yeah. <laughs> I could switch the slide. This is how it actually was on a, on a branch basically of the stream. And the stream bank was very steep. So I nearly fell trying to get this picture. Managing the flash, or any camera, all of that. But I have big hopes for this image, the image before it actually, uh, because it represents, you know, a first. A first, yeah. So you have your flash, you see you said, but the flash is on a wire. Yeah, on the wire. Okay, so it's kind of part of the wire. So you I urge high tech to get my wireless flash yet. <laughs> so you have one hand? I have, flash. no, whoever's with me oh, so will, we'll yeah, will hold the light and the flash. Right and make sure I have good focus and all that. And that's another thing, you need to have people in the field to support you. It's not only you and out in the bush. You have to have friends there to support you. If it's a nighttime image. Nighttime, yeah, about 7 to 18 in the night, yeah. So and there's a more active journey night. Correct, yeah. What kind of snake is that? A cat eye snake, no one cat eye. This is actually an undescribed species, but due to taxon changes. But we and we have some similar, similar, similar yeah. Okay, well, you just call it for the Yes. Yeah. Make a change slide there. Right, this is a green vine snake. Um, very hard to spot. 
for obvious reasons. It's green, it's a bush. Um, and it, it kind of out of focus, but I still like how the people don't really like how the shadow shows here, but I like it. And I didn't really get any talk for kind of here. It changes life. But how big is it? Um, he was about, he was thin, thin, but about a dollar. How big the head is? Big like a top or? Yeah, big like a So you're real, so you're real close to it? Or yeah. Okay. And so, remember the map people I was saying earlier from Turi? This is the, the common lancet from Costa Rica by different species. Bothrops, Aspa is the name. And it's a very small specimen, and so I was very close. I lied on the ground. And I was basically like so close to it. Mm -hmm. And this is a Yeah, highly venomous. You can lose your hand, <laughs> more or less you lose your life if you get bitten. Okay, and that pose it in is not a red strike pose? It's more like a defensive, leave me alone pose, but not really, I'll strike. So try this at home. Alright, the chin slide. And well, in the forest you have natural ponds where frogs tend to breed a lot. And we actually nearly stepped on this guy, eating the frog. <laughs> um, I didn't really get any lighting properly and all that because he was moving quickly and I didn't want to bother him too much. Because I hate when you come upon a creation event and you know the animal might regurgitate it to get away. You don't want to bother them like that. Okay. Yeah. About the same size, about a foot and a half. And I watch any leaf in the background as a different perspective. Okay, change slide. So Zach, you would fall to one image if you think it would be too traumatic for you. Yeah, I'll give up. I'll give up. Uh, walking at night, there's not any reptiles and amphibians. Um, so far, I've seen margies, which is a small ocelot, crabs and raccoons, anteaters. Uh, all in Guyana. This was in Costa Rica. This is a tree toad slot. Um, coming out to take a poop in the middle of the night. <laughs> uh, we bothered him, just for a few pictures and walked off. Next slide. Uh, this is a green and black dart frog. Mildly poisonous, wouldn't really kill him, might vomit a bit. Um, all he wants to do is get away. Um, the reason he looking so dirty like that is because he was hard to catch. Yeah, we ran him down with gloves. And then put him on the Yeah, we put him on the I hope he stayed there, but he didn't stay there for long. So that's why it's kind of like all focus here. The back is in focus, but... Yeah, if you touch them, right? Yeah, if you touch them, like touch your eyes and thing. Next time. So do go here and catch you. And we, my primary focus in Costa Rica was the two species of Bushmasters. They have the black-headed Bushmaster and the Caribbean Bushmaster. Uh, I failed at finding the black-headed Bushmaster. That's really rare. That's the rarest species. But the Caribbean Bushmaster, the Bushmaster Project, is a company in Costa Rica that studies the Bushmaster and the implant tagging devices in Bushmaster. And so we were able to track a few individuals during the day. And we found this one in a burrow. Uh, and we waited for a while, but she went away and think she was sleeping. And so it, it shows you yeah, we can have a lot of these snakes just in burrows. <laughs> you can change the side. Oh, you tap them? They capture them, they drop them, slit them open and basically slide in the implant. And so sometimes through the project, these snakes do die because of the implant. What is the purpose so of the Why would you implant like that? Right, so we know basically nothing about the ecology of the snake. We don't know how they breed, we don't know how, you know, so it was basically in a hoyle colored lions, leopards, yeah. same principle. So it's very fundamental research. On yeah, fundamental definitely. This is the same snake in the night. And we came back in the night, she was out of the burrow hunting. Here I trying to get the image and in the background was about an armadillo size of this. Running around, and I was like, What's that running around in the background? <laughs> so, as soon as we take a picture of the snake, we just see this thing run across. And I was like, Alright, that's a phoenix. Because I mean, Costa Rica has pumas, jaguars. I had to go through all that. Where do you get it? Right up there. You see where this 
stop was right on the left. Okay. And so if that was about a five and a half foot specimen. We can go ahead now. Are we back in Trinidad? This is up Lalaha or near Mamashes Road on the way to Lalaha waterfall. This is a seven foot bushmaster in situ mm -hmm. as we found it on the side of the tree. I was walking and something told me to move the taro leaf, which is a slant in, and look behind it and I saw the thick mid, mid section in the bushmaster. Uh, we named the Bindi. <laughs> Because it's just sliding. Now I didn't really get the lighting I wanted here, but I get a good tongue flick and you see you get a lot, a lot more character from that. Um, our Bushmasters are special. It's the biggest in the world, it's the largest pit viper in the world, and we are the only island to actually have it. Really? Yeah, they grow up to like 10, 12 feet, but they're very rare. I've only seen five alive so far. Uh, I'm continuously searching for them, but they're very rare. We need to appreciate them. They not because they venomous mean you know kill them on sight. You know this is why I take pictures like this to bring awareness. So not because you see a snake in the wild put the bite you. Not you're right, correct. <laughs> not because you see a snake in the wild is going to bite you. No, leave it alone. Take some pictures. Walk away. Run away. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so this lovely gentleman is a Trinidad leaf nesting frog. And it is endemic to Trinidad and the Venezuelan peninsula, of the Pari Peninsula, I think, yeah. And they are important because they have pharmaceutical properties in their peptides, defensive peptides on top. They produce, uh, def defend themselves against funguses, insects. And so, this species actually produces one that uh, promotes insulin in the body, I think. <coughs> and so, other than that, it's a very charismatic frog. You can see the eyes in it. Change it slightly. So, before you change that, what's the material on his back there? I don't know. <laughs> no, natural. I found it like that. You know, um, the, the guacano is released like seeds. All right. So I think it's this that. I didn't put it in. That's all fine. And here we have a mating ball of Trinidad leaf nesting frogs. So it's a bunch of males trying to get to one female. And this is our own natural pond in the forest. And what you have when you find a natural pond like that is multiple species trying to mate. And you have a lot of predators like spiders, snakes. And so it's just a, a concentrated mass of biodiversity. You change type. You can see why we call them Trinidad leaf nesting frogs. This is how they put the eggs in the leaves, and it's usually above a body of water. Uh, the males guard the eggs as usual. Snakes sometimes do eat the eggs, although I haven't seen it yet. You can change slide. So before you close that, yeah. that laying over the water right now, frogs are still in, well, eggs are still in the tadpoles. So then, them eggs gonna form tadpoles and then, you know, and then drop any water. Yeah, so when the tadpoles are fully formed, as the tadpole form or the tail and thing, mm -hmm. they'll drop into the water and then continue onto it on the lives to become metamorphosized and all. Anybody ever do tadpoles? No, no, I'm not not with a species. Other species. Okay, but when you say other species, like uh, from that. They did it with the glass frogs. Okay. They do it with gliding frogs in Costa Rica, which is a similar process, mm -hmm. but never with these. But how long does it take? It takes about a week from laying. The lens will be up, uh, I would like a, a Lawa 24 Pro lens. Mm -hmm. I think that's like 1500 US. Well, see, affordable and what's out for rent, so if you want to sponsor that. It's a lot of stuff. It's a lot of stuff. A few more times. Yeah. It's not three it's just one shot. Yeah, it's just one shot. It's just one shot. 24 millimeters, I think. Yeah. And so, remember I said the concentrated biodiversity. A lot of predators would come around and predate on frogs. So, this is a yellow tree frog, very small frog. 
and he's basically unidentifiable here. Yeah? Uh, this picture, I like this picture, but and not much people like the picture. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> a spider. A spider. Yeah, he yeah. take me the small frog. And so the venom will basically uh, disintegrate the, the frog and make it into a ball until it like basically sucks the juices out of it. Um, I'm not sure. I have the scientific name for it, but I don't know the common name. Okay. That's a trick. Yeah, trick. That's fine. This is in Brasso Seco. How big is it? About small, sir. Small? Yeah, small. Oh. Wait, wait till I see a tarantula. <laughs> no. 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 Small. Small. This is the little fellow that, that got eaten. No, no, no. There's millions of these around one pond. On each leaf. Yeah, this is in Trinidad. In Brasso Seco. How big is this one? Very small. So it's all macro photography. But you know, macro is already hard, and now you know it's a moving subject. Yeah. <laughs> and so you can change that. Um, they got a bit too excited, you can see. <laughs> this was also a, a world first into species and plexus. Milky tree frog trying to meet with trainer leaf nesting frog. And so again, I got to publish this. Um, it, that was last year, yeah. I never witnessed it again. I make sure I'm back to visit the spot at the same time, but it was only at this specific time this ever happened. Wow. Well, well, was he right alive? Right, right, yeah, it was right by. Yeah, yeah, next Yeah. 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 I regularly publish there. I'm, I'm not a reviewer there, so I review people's papers now. Um. Yeah, you can change the title. All right, so this so is would that, sorry. Yep. Would that also be a viable? No, definitely. Okay. Definitely. Would they have also? It's two different genus and different mating styles, different. So you see blue black frogs? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> And so this is another mapping balance in the common answer about a three foot specimen. If you can spot it, he's trying to eat a rat mm. on this side. We made sure and um, walk up slowly to not disturb him. Um, I got this image. Change the change that. So he's consuming its head food. So you can see he'll tick on a rat at all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So that would not affect your digestion. As vitamins, I like a little tablet. <laughs> yeah. Um, we waited for a while and he tried to consume it, but I would say it was all too big for him. So we took the rat, preserved the rat. He's now in a jar. Why? <laughs> for science. When he took two or no? When he took two, yeah, he was still alive. Yeah, he preserved it. Yeah. Because we don't know, we, we don't even know the forest rats we have. We could, this could be a new species. Oh, <laughs> wow. We change that. How close, how close are you to that shot? You said. Uh, well, I was at 105. So about from, from here to here. Yeah. And then you waited until you go to the and then pick up the rats? Yeah, I waited until the snake went off and picked up the rats. So you just left here? Yeah, he just left. Also, you didn't eat it He didn't eat it. I think it was too big because I mean I made sure not to disturb him and wait, but he just didn't want to eat it. <laughs> and so this is one of the rarest snakes here in Trinidad. It, yeah, it's, it's a checker belly. Go the checker belly snake. It eats lizards. It's arboreal. It's colored so beautifully. Um, I've only found three. This one was Shadramas. Uh, it's about. What's arboreal? Tree, tree dwelling. I could change this idea. Uh, this is how I. What's that? How big that 
Yeah. About train and half feet. Yeah, this is a train and half feet. Train and half feet. Yeah. Uh, well, this is how I take a picture. You see how close I am? And uh, the flash is on top here with the wire. Uh, 24, 1 5, 1 and a half, I think. Yeah. You have to get comfortable on your ground. <laughs> yeah, you can go to your next side now. <laughs> this is all I have on your left. Sprawlers, you have to get comfortable. Mm -hmm. And somebody was asking me for a frog ever jump on the camera. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is the golden tree frog here, hopping mm -hmm. on the Kino 7 mark. We are on top of the blue chip. We can change the slide. Uh, we're back in Guyana. This is the neotropical pipe snake. It's a very primitive species of snake because of the basic anatomy. You can see the scales over the eye, mainly built for underground, false cor coral. Basically, color like a coral mimic to look venomous. This is venomous. Change the slide. Yeah. yeah. So it's transparent. Yeah. And then because it, it is borrowed underground or something, so you yeah. get sand in the eye. Yeah. This is the Brazilian monkey tree frog. It is one of the biggest members of the genus. From It's about big like this. Um, the reason this frog is special is because the Amerindians use it part of their spiritual tenzin. The frog emits a peptide for defense that contains an opioid in it. And so get it, they get high. And sometimes if they get too high, they start to vomit and all that. Because it, it, it's made for defense. And I chose to represent different parts of the frog. A full body, one time in the eye, the, by the legs here, the toes. I really like this eye shot. The shadows and everything. It's, Perfect. You can change the slide. This is a Brazilian rainbow boa. We have rainbow boas down here, but they're not as reflective or beautiful as this. It's a different subspecies. Um, this one, I was trying to photograph it, but this is the only good image I got because my camera fogged up after. It was very cold that night. And we were battling. It was like 15 degrees, I think. And we're in a hammock. So I froze today. <laughs> the so next step. Yeah? You see, these more reflective than the Trinidad. Yeah. So like, why is for the great one? They're poisonous or they're not poisonous or what? That's real under the yeah. so, area. What are so those are actually heat sensing pits. What are they? They detect heat. Uh -huh. So it could, in a dark room, without smell, it can sense heat and latch on to anything with the body heat. Hence, mammals. Yeah, except. Uh, this is the jewel of the Guyanas, the emerald tree boa. Uh, this was about two and a half, three feet. A juvenile just coming out in the red phase into the green. He was surprisingly calm. Usually they bite a lot, and if you ever see an um, anatomy of the skull, it's some serious teeth. Uh, these are the, again, heat seeking fits. Uh, this was probably one of my best images from Guyana last year. Not because it's a flagship species, but you know, I find this is one of my best images thus far. Well, Next time. Time. Well, he, he 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 is he detected? Yeah. This is a dwarf caiman, a Snyder's dwarf caiman. A small specimen, uh, similar to our spectacle caimans, but you can see the scales on the back. A little more pointed. He did try to bite, but you just have to make sure no play out in front of him. How big this one is? This one is about two it's feet. Baby. Yeah, baby. Two feet. Yeah. How big? Two feet. About two feet. Yeah. 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 Definitely. So big and you say he's a dwarf? Yeah. As a dwarf baby. Yeah. Why is he as a dwarf? Adult is about four and a half feet. Okay. Yeah. That's fine. Where was this? Guyana. Yeah. Um, it was Iowa Kramer, okay. So this is not the one we have here? Yeah. No. We do have a rumored species of dwarf caiman similar to this. I have done all her trips looking for it oh, to try to confirm it. I haven't found it yet. I hope it's here. So the one we have is yeah, bigger than this also? Yeah, the one we have, the spectacle caiman, gets up. I've seen one last week, this week, about eight feet. Yeah. Next time. 
All right, now this trip I was searching for the golden tree frog at up El Cerro del Rico, and I failed. I heard the frog, but we didn't find it. Walking back from the summit, uh, my colleague Nicholas Walker, he was walking and he basically nearly stepped on it. And I was just like, stop. And anybody know when I put my hands up, it's because of how venomous must say. And the snake was basically like right here. And so he just, and he walks basically barefoot sometimes. <laughs> so he had to basically just step away. And so it was on a trail, I managed to get this really nice shot. I uh, had my 100 mil macro, so I was, yeah, I get a proud of this image, the lighting is intact. And we moved them off the trail on some moss, get some nice full body shots. Mm -hmm. The moss is really nice. <laughs> just gonna feed you, We had a steak hook. So you do have to handle them sometimes. Yes. For their own good, to move them off the trail, they could hit somebody, they could die, because somebody passed it to them. How big this one was? Like, feet? He was about a foot and a half. <laughs> Alright, we got the golden tree frog, but not on El Cerro. That are cool. cool. The golden tree frog. Yeah. Um, we got it on El Cooch back in June. This image was featured in the Parliament Rotunda Gallery for the exhibition in living color. Um, I call it en enigmatic and elegant because enigmatic means mysterious. And we know basically nothing about the frog except that it's there and it's critically endangered. We don't know the behavior. We don't know basic mating. We barely know the call. And so it is threatened by a particular fungus that we found last year. And we believe that could be the, that is the final call for it. That is extinction if it progresses. It's a certain fungus that attacks them in the stage metamorphosis. And yeah, that's basically it for that. Is it indigenous? Is it? Right, so we have basically four islands in the sky mountains that could keep that suitable for the golden tree frog. El Tecuch, El Cerro Rico, and a couple others surrounding it. Venezuela has them, but we're not sure how far up the, um, the ridge line. On El Cerro Humo, they only found a couple. But that's good for the species, but I mean, this belongs to Trinidad. It's Trinidad one, found it there first. So the fungus is found on all of the bridges? It was found on Altacuch. We've yet to do it on El Cerro Del Rico. You all studied the fungus? It was one study done on a couple of surveys back in August of this year. Yeah. Uh, okay. uh, UE. Yeah, a couple of guys from UE. Uh, so what's special about this shop? Well, for you. Asking you. So, why I'm asking this is like, from your perspective, what does it make a good yeah. shot? Well, your, your eyes? it's sharp in the ears, it needs to be on the edge of the eye. The front of the eye is not really sharp yet, but it's a full body shot and it's posed like perfectly. And it's the only image you're gonna see of the golden tree frog like this. Uh, don't mean to boast, but nobody else is gonna get image like this. <laughs> is that male or female? Or? This is a female because of the size. Okay. And so the hike up to here is about three and a half hours, four hours. It took basically four hours. As normal people. As normal. That I'm normal. <laughs> 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 and by the time you're up there, you're already half dead. This was about a four trip. It took me to find the frog. Uh, they, they live in bromeliads. They live all their lives in bromeliads. They hunt. They breed. There is a young any tank bromeliads up there. And so Altacooch has a higher density of bromeliads up on the peak because of the geographical location of it, also the coastline. And so how I found this one, we were walking down the trail, south of the peak, and it had a palm tree with one big bromeliad. I was like, Nicholas, this is the one. And I pulled on the bromeliad and he just looked at it and out hopped the frog onto the forest floor and Nicholas just had to go running after it. <laughs> Next slide. I had walker around it. I had walk around it. <laughs> <laughs> and so, why does this frog need to have gold in its eyes? Wow. The iris is just gold plated. It's like, 
You'll, they'll have a fine and more beautiful frog than this. Mm -hmm. So how much of this angle you have? I have a good bit, but this is the only one that I'm pleased with. So how much it take to get this one? This one angle is about a dozen pictures. And what you was yeah, only, yeah, you don't have much chances with frogs. And what you was trying to focus on when it was taking each other and make it choose this one as the one. Right, so first I went for the full body. The full body before, that's what I got, I was happy with that. Mm -hmm. Then I was looking to just basically get the headshot, get the both eyes kind of focused. Right. It was about F10. A little bit of room to work with. Um, and yeah, I basically was pleased with this image of the image. It will get better when I get better equipment. Right, so question for uh, the room, I, I live, right? Now, you he, he get the eyes in a real nice focus. Is it possible with the lenses that, or what lenses might make it possible that you have the eyes and maybe like all the nose kind of out of focus? Possible to get the whole frontage there? Mm -hmm. Chris? Focus stacking. Focus stacking and yeah, that frog gotta stay still for 12 months. Focus stacking. And this is Altaku Ridge Line from Las Cuevas Road, Las Cuevas side. It's, it's like the, it's the best piece. It, when you go up there, it's a different ecosystem. You feel very cool. It's very cool up there. Get changed like This is on the left here, my palm trees. This is the peak of El Cerro Rico. And down here is basically the, the South Valley, I think. That's like going to uh, I mean, a little orange dot up there. Yeah, that's going to um, quarry. Okay. And this is, on the right is basically our campsite. This is looking north towards Brasso Seco, Madama site. And you can see the mountains in the distance. So that's why you don't dominate the middle of the mountains. Brasso Seco. Look at this gorgeous. Look at this And so, remember I was saying we went looking for the dwarf caimans? Well, after, the week after the Golden Tree Frog, we went looking. I was like, alright, let me go and look for the Suriname tomb. I had my contact for the um, El Tepuch Trail, and we went down Pinal looking for this frog. At the end of the trip, we realized it's the wrong frog we're looking for. <laughs> there was a miscommunication. It has a similar frog that we call the Suriname Toad, not this guy. And I was like, let me not take it too personally. It was a mistake. Let me see where else we can go. So I sit down on a log next to the car, plugging some GPS points. And I was like, all right, guys, we're looking for Dwarf Key ones. We head down Grandville and we stopped off at a stream. I was walking in front. Nicholas was walking behind and he was like, Zach, I find a frog. He's like, what do you mean, what frog? I didn't have no frog. <laughs> <laughs> he, well, he pulled pull this guy out the net and all of you just start screaming. Because this is the first time in over 30 years this frog will be documented on the island. We thought it was extinct. It's a Suriname toad. It's beautiful because of its habits, it lives entirely in water. It's extremely sensitive to water conditions. So, like, it used to occur carony, fishing pond, basically Komoto and all that, but because of the urbanization and all that, they're going extinct from one stream in Granville that we now have to take care of. Okay, so it's just like it. Yeah, was that, I mean, it was a little more than your, your, your plan and your thought process because you wanted to just be two right we, we, we did. We did. <laughs> <laughs> we, they, had, they had the Dwarf Cayman locations published in a paper. And we went to those locations to look for Dwarf Caymans. Uh, we didn't find any Dwarf Caymans, we found this guy. <laughs> but that was we wasn't look, he wasn't looking. We, wasn't looking, we wasn't looking for this, but we saw this. It's, it's undocumented, it's a Right, we wasn't looking for it. And we were, at 11 o'clock at night we were. And then we realized, in your own place. Yeah. <laughs> and two, it was kind of silent thing because I didn't want to tell anybody. <laughs> yeah, but that's it. From like the back in my head, always thinking, yeah, always really yeah. looking all for this thing. I think yeah. like, we were just on a high from the tree. We, we were. And then we were just like, let's just find these people over. Yeah. 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 yeah.
Well, I was on the, as you said, the high from the golden tree frog. Yeah. And I was like, you want to roll next week? So said, so done. <laughs> next slide. And so they reproduce like this. These are eggs on the back. So um, the eggs are laid on the female's back. It's basically like, I don't know how to do it, but the eggs is in a body back somewhere. It has a description of it, but that's very long. Um, so they don't push it through the skin? Yeah. 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 The eggs, 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 the uh, we can recognize Laura because she has a, a part of her leg missing on the left hip. Where is it? I'm missing. Next slide. And this is the baby emerging. Holy <laughs> Lord. So we have the babies on them. So they just go through the whole tadpole thing on the back and then yeah. when they come out. Come on, as they just come out like a mini me. Yeah. Froggy. Yeah. And that red thing on top there is like the water bag. Yeah. <laughs> I guess so. So even though this wasn't documented for 30 years, is there research and data on it? Or is it still to be well, researched? With regards to this, we published an uh, update basically, or uh, update any status on the species. Like this, that's like a broadcast. Like they back. So it's not, it's not, it's not. Yeah, it's not gone. Um, we had published data back in like 1953. And so I hope within the next like couple months we we'll do some more research on it, do numbers, do counts, probably tags, get again population. Hopefully, keep the area clean because people do like dump rubbish, and I hate to see rubbish in the stream next to a frog like this. Alright, next slide. Well, I guess they did die if you move them because I read that um, people that tried to move them from like Komoto for specimens and they, they just died out of stress. Yeah. This is not a horse whip. <laughs> Thinking is a horse whip, it's not. I did not know. Yeah, this is. One of the rarest snakes in Trinidad is called the Grey Laura. It lives in the mountains. It's very small. It's about two and a half feet, very thin. And this is the only specimen I've ever seen. We found it on a road crossing on a morning. It's endemic to Trinidad, and this is probably like one of seven snakes I've ever seen. Is there another snake in Trinidad that looks like that? Yeah, the horse whip. Okay. The horse whip, yeah. Look just like a same. Yeah. Like a head. The picture on the left is a crop or is a Yeah, it's a crop. It's a crop. No, that's the scale. No, I mean it. A crop? Like your crop that picture. No, this yeah. is that's that one to one ratio, ratio. hundred millimeter, yeah. Okay. And a white background. The reason I'm doing white background is because I wanna make a book one day, rock as and be in the train as they go. And I want it to be clear crips images. <laughs> Because, yeah, Kripsi. Lace Kripsi. So you, you, you shot it on white? On white, yeah. Where? On the side of the road. <laughs> <laughs> so you have any equipment here to shoot you? No. You sneak home, oh, no. You know what we're like in the car with it? In my Corolla, and I had my mom. <laughs> yeah. Alright, so this guy uh, is the brilliant South American gecko. He, this was at the mouth of Tamana Caves. It's one of the most vibrant specimens I got. Um, they are fa fairly easy to photograph. You don't really have to handle them, you just sort of like coach them and they'll run onto the log and they hope, hope that they stay there and get a shot. Next time. So they play around with these models and them too then? Sometimes. This is the Tobago Falls coral. 
It is known as the imperfect coral. It's endemic to Tobago. Imperfect because it has oscillation rather than banding. Um, I like to say if we ever have a national snake, this should be it. Red, white, and black. Uh, we often see them as roadkill on the Tobago Main Ridge Road. And they eat snakes. They are primarily a snake eater. This image here was basically with sunlight and a fill flash, just to keep the outline uh, on a piece of rock. Next slide. This is actual coral. This is, the, this is the guy, this is the large coral. And they get up to four feet. Four feet? Yeah, four feet. This is actually oh, fat. about, uh, they, do, they don't get proportionately fat, rather thin. Um, they eat other snakes, they are highly venomous. They have a neurotoxin. They, if you won't feel much pain, but you're going to, you'll just die. Yeah, you'll just feel. <laughs> but you, you could be treated in Trinidad. Just so you had to know what you're doing. If you go by a doctor, like call somebody who know to talk to the doctors and tell them what to do. <laughs> they didn't. Well, we had an incident and. The doctors didn't know that they had antivenom. We had to be like, all right, you have this is the antivenom. Use this. <laughs> they didn't really know how to deal with it. But this snake can't really go many more wide, right? So people um, say that they can't really open more wide, but if it's aggressive, they will kind of like headbutt you on the side, and a fang will stick out on the side, oh. like a stiletto. So. Yeah, the car, yeah. They and will bite you from the side? Yeah, so like if you hold it and it, it like hits you somewhere, it can, you can get a slice and that's enough to pack you up. If you have <laughs> <laughs> Next slide. Um, and so this is a underwater predation vent. Um, you can see the film basically the water. And it's a water coral eating a zanji. It, the, the head of the snake is upside down. The zanji is a bit too big, and the zanji is biting onto the snake. <laughs> this image, I had to fight the glare a lot from a flash. I had the flash up on this side. Dominic was behind the flash. I was bossing him around that night. <laughs> um, you can see the spiders on the edges and the fishes. So the spider in the water? Or? Above. Above. Right, okay. kind of hard to see yeah. the water yeah, the 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 Right, the water very clear. So for me, I've seen a little kind of flash reflection on the upper right yeah. part, so that kind of like you will. And so all the snake, everything is underwater. Water. Water. So all it needs are the water. Yeah. 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 The snake just sticking out parts. Um, this was never really photographed good before for the species. Again, I have a lot of hopes because it's a creation event. And uh, it, it tells a story, you know, I call this, this image uh, stalemate because the snake had to regurgitate in order to survive because it has to breed every like 45 minutes. And so we waited, yeah, yeah, we had to wait for a while to see what was going to happen, but eventually they regurgitated. And the Zanji was still alive. <laughs> yeah. So they both survived? They both survived. Well, the Zanji might die because of the venom. The water coral does have a small so one. After, <laughs> after we went around, we looked and it was in a big forest puddle. Yeah, we couldn't find it. We looked. So it was about water. so much in water. So, so to get us a image. So how deep that water is? About. I mean, when people compare my height. <laughs> <laughs> right, so it's about like this. And I had to be like that. In the water, trying to get a picture. Basically, got water all up there. And so, yeah. Boots have a hole right now, and again, you boots. So, the water coral is not as venomous as the large coral. Correct. Uh, the water coral is mildly venomous, but I don't like, we don't mention that because it causes confusion. But if it bites you, it's probably like a bee sting. Okay, so it wouldn't pack you. It wouldn't pack you. If you're allergic to bee stings, I mean, anything can pack you. Next slide. Uh, this is a little close up um, of the Zanji and the water pearl. Oh, I see the Zanji kind of. Yeah. It was hard to photograph this. Yeah, 
Yeah. 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 <laughs> and well, that's the end. I like to end it on, uh, on my favorite frog, one of the favorite frogs. Mm -hmm. This is not Nicholas one. That's not Gloria. No, that's not Gloria. Gloria White background, then come on, good. So, this is one in by the DB double single. Granville. You said you found five of these, right? Yeah. So, you went out and found an extinct. You want five extinct crops. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that was about two in the morning. <laughs> we reach on my sunrise. <laughs> uh, yeah, thanks for coming. Um, I hope you guys see about see a lot about why I do in the background, the story behind the image, and why we do it for the conservation. I hope you all, when you all see a snake, you don't kill it. I hope you can take that away. Yeah. Thanks. So you're not supposed to make any well. What's the best course of action to take? Leave. Move. Walk away. Leave. Yeah, to leave it, yeah. Just so like... Run? No, don't run. Um, because you might run and hit your head. <laughs> so like... They, and people say they'll chase you. No, they won't chase you. Yeah. You if you're pregnant? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> How much fun should you drink? <laughs> That's about <funny>. it. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Any questions? Any questions? Yeah. I have, I have two questions. Go ahead. Yeah. You can take us from the the snapper man all the way down. Okay. So my mom had a old small pointer shoot, two picks, and then for SEA I wanted a a camera. I got a Nikon P six hundred, and so that has a nice sensor and pop up flash and everything. A good zoom, and basically you saw the pictures with the um, foil diffuser I was trying to use, and then I uh, moved on to like a pop-up diffuser that used to do good. And then I used to do photography in um, high school, so Trinity Colleges, and my photography teacher was selling his 7D, and I bought it off him for, off a good price, and that's the camera I have to this day. Uh, oh yeah, I sold a lot of prints. <laughs> to some students that came down from um where did he come down from away? Quite quite. Yeah, quite quite. He states. And he said that the news was still as a bad video something. Oh yeah. <laughs> 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 Zaka, he still has that happen. Anything he wants he would write a letter. So he wrote the letter that the camera was seven thousand dollars. And I told him if you could come up with half. And she didn't think I was going to come up So, <laughs> Yeah, uh, that came out of 51.8, not really the best for hoops. Uh, came with a flash also, so I adapted with a diffuser, the 51.8. And I went on, I got a really good deal on 24.05. It was broken, the aperture ring was broken. I uh, fixed it. I still have that lens, that's what I use for a good couple of shots. Then Faraz Abdul was upgrading to his mirrorless package. And he was like, Zach, I have this 100 mil. I know you wanted it for a while. Mm -hmm. Got a good price, take it. <laughs> and so that's, that's I, I think it's all the R7 and upgrade probably next year, but that's a lot of money. Yeah, the but I think, uh, I think they'll, they'll show that with macro photography, whatever you want to call this, it's not quite macro, right? Not quite macro, yeah. Uh, you need a lot of gear. Correct, yeah. Crop yeah, crop sensor. Yeah, crop sensor. And before I had this extension tube, me and Rena um, I basically tried to hold the lens out from the body. <laughs> to flip it on, yeah. I used to try to do that. And so it's, it's about making the best of what you have, right? So I just want to make some questions on that point. So, you know, people run down here. Here is season which is Zach is making and it's not the top top end cameras and top top lenses, you know, so it's That's about your passion. Images. It's about, yeah. about you know, pursuing what you want to do, it's researching, it's getting make any equipment you have for okay. yeah. mm -hmm. Right. So my uh, my two questions uh, tell us a little bit about what happens if you do get it. You, know, you kinda of stop the yeah. hotel then, right? Yeah. And what you should do. And then the other question I always have, because I run in Shagramas, and I know you hardly see, but I hardly see snakes. Is it that 
I'd probably run past twenty snakes when I run it. Or is it that they are? Yeah. So to answer your second question first, uh, I think it was Tuesday night. Nicholas. Yeah. Tuesday night we were looking for snakes in uh, San Hill, Pomitan, good area for Anaconda, we didn't find it. And we actually sat down on a buttress and I walked past and my auntie Sabira spotted up a mock me while saying, right next to the buttress where I was in the home. So they're and there. And they're there. You just never noticed them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> yeah. And if you do get bit, the best thing to do is just get to the closest hospital. Don't go, if you're in Charamas, go to the closest one, don't rush to Grandi. Um, all hospitals are supposed to have it, they, just Grandi is the most experienced. And it depends, you're most likely going to get bitten by a mock people saying, do not tie the, the leg or the hand. You will lose your limb if you do that, because it's a, new, it's a hemotoxic venom that's, that breaks down the flesh, right? And so your hand will be slitting ground green, you lose your new vendings on. If it's a coral snake, very unlikely, but you may have some um, effectiveness with the tonica because that's a neurotoxic venom. But again, it's, it's just get to the nearest hospital as soon as you could. So if it's a lot you don't tie your feeling. Don't tie. You just remain calm, don't drink no punch in with um, scorpion. <laughs> 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 There's a Bushmaster, <laughs> all right. The Bushmaster is the caveat here because um, the Bushmaster has neurotoxic and hemotoxic venom. And you're not supposed to get friends of the suck out the venom. Nah, nah, nah. There's a, some bush people, you know, say there's a plant. Oh, snake bite plant, a little berry that if you eat it, it tastes real nasty, but it'll bite you about two hours. If you could test the effectiveness, sure, but I, we can't test it. I work with a lot of hunters and I hear about this every day. All the remedies they try to use and it's like, nah, just get to the hospital as quick as you could. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, the last thing is you mentioned for us, but you all look for us as an amazing Death. bird mostly. Yeah, I look up to for us from, things, from small. Right? And you have an exhibition going on now at Hagenas, right, yeah. Feel free to Hagenas or only Savannah. Okay, yeah. Fuck, yeah. <laughs> Hagen Nass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Hagen Nass from Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. We do not make, we get them from Colombia. Yeah, we get uh, the general anti venom for the uh, coral snake, and we get the anti venom for the bothrops, the mafia well seen. Um, they, they lack a lot in the, in the ocelot. So I had to do camera traps with flashes for that one. DSLR setups, but that's expensive. So I think uh, and camera traps are getting it with all the traps. Oh hell no, <laughs> never, hundred percent no. Uh, we have a couple other camera traps. Camera trap. I've done camera trapping, but scientifically before, it does black and white images, colored images, not the best images. I have a lot of them. I didn't put them in the presentation. But we did a whole camera trapping throughout the Paria Forest. We got about 22 individuals, ocelots. We got like a couple bands of wild hog, but from this data, I can tell you, we in, we in real problems in Trinidad and hunting. And why is it difficult to capture them? We mean like in real? Yeah. Elus they're elusive, like they're primary, primary nocturnal. And like the chances, I've never seen one, I've seen prints. Very sure they are prints. Mm -hmm. yes. I've from the camera trap, we'll see an ocelot walk, 9 a.m. and 10 minutes after is when we reach to the camera trap to check it. So they are on the cats, they elusive. Are you with you No, it's just my personal research. Okay. Yeah. I I don't really. You don't need a degree to do this. <laughs> As yeah. Well, I see a lot of, um, like I see for the Natural History Museum in London, one of the behavior shots they featured was killer whales eating seals. Mm -hmm. And a drone shot from that. 
So I feel like the drones, I got a master in drones a bit, and then underwater photography and camera trapping, <coughs> more in that camera trapping. But what drive in yeah. I mean, so far, what I, well, two things, I mean, when you bring up, you see that the, those people doing that kind of shot, and in the beginning, you started with, well, they get the camera, because when you open National Geographic, you see camera there, and you like that. So it's like an outside influence, kind of, driving in some parts of it, but something had to come from inside you that is driving it to want to do a certain aspect of this thing, which, what is that one? If, if you have one thing in your mind... Fab is just a sense of purpose right now. Right. Yeah. And the purpose is to save these... Photograph, save these animals, teach people about this. I much rather be in the bush than talking to a bunch of people. <laughs> so <laughs> so I just rather be in the bush than be in the bush. I could add to that. Yeah. Um, so that I think it's more than just that because from the outside I see how they are, uh, uh, when I say they are, they are group together with that thing. I think that has a lot to do with it. Definitely is. When I started volunteering at the Elsgrove Wildlife Center, that's who I met, the people who I go to the bush with. And that's very important, you know. Yeah. Your friends, yeah. yeah so maybe talk, just, I mean, I don't know if everybody knows this, talk a bit about the Wildlife Center and the right. place that you have. Yeah. So, so, yeah. so from eight years old, after I did a surgery, I used to read a lot of books. I used to have my brother take the books out of the house, Put them outside on a five finger tree so I could read them. He was <laughs> a park rat, so he could take all the books that he liked. At that time, it was good. I still have the books. Yeah, and he would go outside. Yeah, and um, one day my auntie brought home a Savannah Hawk from the Wildlife Center, and I was like, all right, I love, I, I, I read about this food, and now I want to work with this food. Uh, it was a Savannah Hawk named Tyler. He had his, it was his right wing amputated. it. And Tyler was the first raptor I bonded with. I used to do all these displays with Tyler. And I used to be a little quiet kid taking care of the raptors at the Wild Center. Uh, that's my forte at the beginning. I met the guys who I'm with now, Western and Hippen. Just recently, we formed a nonprofit for specifically raptors and amphibians. And so we all do similar research. We all do. I'm the director of photography for this. And so. It's all directed to you know the conservation aspect. I don't know if that answered that question properly. Which wildlife center is this? Elsgrove Wildlife. Yeah. So it's Western Hippen is what? The non-profit that you all started. Yeah. Yeah. So Western Hippen is the non-profit that you all started. Not professionally. No. Right. And what's the goals and objectives of Western Hippen? To conserve and protect the amphibians and reptiles, not specifically. We just put that as the, you know, the tagline, but I do all my projects, camera trapping, and also reptiles and amphibians. So yes, we do reptiles and amphibians, conservation of it, the education of it. We do ecotourism. We have at least a dozen tours a year directed to reptiles and amphibians. This year we had about two or three clients from the UK come down to look for snakes here. So when is it tours? You could hire a little one, shoot some doubles looking from Nadine. Yeah, with Chana and all the Chana. Nadine. Nadine, yeah, you're not, you're not getting this location. <laughs> well, the yellow car you want. Yeah, you can get it. The Girano. Before we wrap up, though, following on from this, Zach has said he's going to take us, I think it's over to 25 people on a safari through the Hoopin through the Hoopin society to Wasamaki. Wasamaki. Wasamaki is a state down freeport. It means from the fish. They run a tropical fish farm right now and it's a general permaculture area and the environment they create is optimal for for wildlife to come. So their ecosystem, the aquatic ecosystem and all is intact with all the fish that's supposed to be there. As well as amphibians. Amphibians are up there, yeah. So we'll go for that. We'll put out. Before the end of the year. Yeah. And then we'll pass. Yeah. And we'll get you a set up. That's all. And moving from this, 
What's the next step? So like for example, this frog here, right? You say from certain element, you now find it here. Um, people know about the mating habits and the living habits and the average stage on that and all, all the planning to do that. Because I remember the golden tree frog, you said, we don't have any information about how they is proliferate and yeah, yeah. how they make is. But they have information about this one and how they plan to go about more on this one or you're going to focus on the tree frog or you have any focal points that you want to uh, the focal points right now, I kind of want to keep on the um, white background part of it. Uh, the general research, not directed to uh, the Golden Tree Frog, but it will transition to a point where I will go completely video and do documentaries eventually. Okay. Yeah. Alright, so yeah. I mean, I know we have a few, I'll stick around for a while, we have some pizza, we have some soft drinks and stuff. So. Let's uh, start this is great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 yeah.